Hello everyone and welcome to this week's ProRPA.com tutorial on UiPath, the probably the most sophisticated RPA solution available in market today. Um, well, this week we'll be talking about uh, error handling mechanisms, right? I remember when I started this blog post, everybody wanted to, or, or at least I got a, quite a few emails saying that, you know, when will you start with the error handling and uh, and uh, we would want to learn how to, you know, make your, our robots more robust um, or as reliable as possible. So uh, finally, we are at a stage where we should be able to handle the error uh, in an efficient way, or at least we can understand what all different options are available. And uh, alongside, um, like, I'll divide the whole tutorial into probably two or three sessions, but today we'll be giving an overview of what error handling means and. Uh, what sort of different uh, built-in features are provided within UiPath Studio for us to handle errors in, uh, in or, or the exceptions as we call them, in the best possible way, right? So um, for um, the, the first and foremost that I want to talk about is that, you know, once you go to the execute tab, because we have mostly dealt with the design tab, the ribbon tab, but uh, in the execute tab is where we have several options for debugging and for validating whether the program is going to work fine or not. So um, I'm going to, I've already provided like uh, the theoretical details for the same. So please feel free to check them out in this week's blog post. You can find that in the description uh, for this video as well. And uh, let's first create a program and then we'll, um, you know, see how the error handling mechanism works. So I'm gonna open a notepad document right here, right? And uh, what we'll do is, uh, let's create a program which uh, goes to this uh, format button. Yeah, do not show me this. Format. and font, right? I'm gonna, let's say, choose Cooper, bold, 16, hitting okay, doesn't do much. And also I'm typing some text. And then uh, empty the field. And um, we have discussed all this, so I'm not going to go through that again and again, but um, I'm hitting the enter. It's writing and uh, let's save an exit and we have the recording with us. OK, it did click a few times on the format, so um, probably it wasn't it, it was a little slow or unresponsive. The target application, which is the notepad in this case. And again, I have discussed these sort of things as well. And once you look into the program, you can see, right, that the same activity has been um, written thrice. So you can simply delete them. You know, you uh, it's 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 all right to to make changes to your recorded sequence so that you know, I mean, so that it makes perfect sense to you, or, or like you know, because we've discussed the de activities also in greater detail before in our previous blog posts. So once you have that um, uh, recording sequence ready, I'm going to set it as start node. Just see if it works or not. Um, just giving it a shot. And the format font, it's choosing whatever it is. And then it is writing high impact RPA. Because uh, we emptied the field, so it didn't overwrite. It it took the in whatever data was written within this text area of notepad and simply uh, give the message that we wanted to print within the workflow. Okay, so um, now what we'll do is we'll go to execute and I want to show you what debug does. So what debug is going to do is, uh, because right now the program is simple, but uh, I have kept these two windows, like this notepad window and uh, the workflow side by side so that you'll be able to better see what exactly validate does. Um, I'm or, sorry, debug does. So, and there's a shortcut for it as well, F7. If I click on debug, and I've already done the slow step. So you can see it's gonna mark everything in yellow, the highlight, right? You see on the right hand side, it says highlight and on the uh, on the left at the target application side, it's gonna do exactly what uh, the activity is supposed to do. 
So it went there. Now it's going to click on the font. Here it is. Then clicking done. Do. Yes. All good. Attach window. Yes. It did attach the window. Now it's going to the dialog. Where it's choosing the Cooper. You can see select item Cooper. There it is. Then it's choosing boat. Then next is 16. There it is. And then hit OK. Done. You can see. Right. Uh, and uh, if I wouldn't have chosen this slow step, um, which is right here, um, you would have uh, seen this whole process working pretty fast. So I usually use debug with the slow step because I would want to debug it. I want I would want to see which activity is responsible for which operation at the target application side and whether um, they are going to work or not. Right. If there is some issue, then it helps me identifying the problem. I need to identify it first before uh, making any sort of uh, remediations to my workflow. Correct. So, um, yep, that's what uh, debug does. It's a very, very important uh, built in feature and it comes very handy when we have built like large complex workflows. OK, then uh, I've also discussed validate, which um, it does automatically as well as you have may have seen that, you know, if uh, there is any sort of operation that needs to be performed and um, you haven't given any mandatory parameter or any anything that is let's say for input parameter if you haven't uh, um, given the input or if this is of the workflow doesn't know where to input it to like there's no um, selector for the ui element that has been given or something like that then of course um, you can either click on the validate or it automatically because ui path is such a sophisticated software that it it does this validation like each and every second. Anytime you mess up the program, it will right away show that there's a validation error, right? So if you want to check the whole program at once, it says no validation errors found, so you're all set, right? And um, next that I've also talked about are the breakpoints. And in breakpoints, um, you can uh, simply just, let's say you want your program to stop after clicking the font, right? Then uh, set it as breakpoint. Or you can have chosen you could have chosen the toggle breakpoint option here as well, right? So once chosen, I mean, we could um, um, say that you know at this particular point, the debugging mode would hold off, and um, this is actually used like you know as checkpoints. So you would know that up to this point, the program, up to this activity, the program has been working fine or not. And then you can focus on the next particular activities, the subsequent activities, and uh, and probably debug them. Right. So let's see how it works. Uh, I'm starting the debug. We already have the breakpoint set. So it's going to go back to, and it's going to highlight all the activities that will be executed. There it is, attaching it to the window. Do click the format. Again, checking the do and the attach window. Then it goes back to attach menu. Click do and click on the menu item. Here it is. It did. And it stopped. Nothing is going to go on uh, after this. Right? So, I mean, either you can continue or by pressing the F7 and then it will continue with the next operation or you can stop the process altogether. And then you may want to restart. Right? So that's that's actually a very, very important and very, um, again, a handy feature that comes uh, very as very useful when you're dealing with very, very big programs. Because um, you can see, right, uh, tackling a problem one by one and uh, knowing that, you know, this part or this particular functionality of a bot is uh, up and running, it's all good, it's all smooth, it, it's really important and um, and drills down your problem identification thing to to a very minimal subset of activities where you can you know focus more and simply either rewrite them or make any amendments necessary to to get a, a reliable working solution right okay so i'm going to stop this i'm going to not continue it and uh, i've also discussed about um, the step into and step over you can check that out that if you want to step into the program the workflow that means each an activity would be like single activity would be performed so you'll have to keep pressing the step into step into click clicking on it uh, one by one and correspondingly the activities would be worked upon as you can see give me a second 
if you go step into step into now it's going to the sample Now it went to the recording sequence. I just opened it up already. Then step into means attaching itself to the window, step into, and then click on format, which is actually, again, because you're working with target applications, it's a little slow, but it did click on the format, if you see, because I just stepped into it. Now, if I go out of it, it will take out the font option. It didn't, it did. Uh, I just wanna show you if it works, it, it would. Now it went out because I have, once I clicked on step into, then, um, um, you know, for these sort of operations, what you may want to do is, you may want to make sure that once you're stepping into the next activity, then, uh, because if you remember when we were debugging, it was going back as well, the click menu item. So if you step into this, Right. Once you're dealing with subsequent uh, screens, it's not a good option to go with the step into. I'll tell you a better option, which is step over, or you can simply break this as well. Once you are like in the middle of a step process, simply break it or just stop it all together. And then if I click this, right, initially by stepping into, I'll step into the program. That means the start activity, the node is being processed. Now it's the sample. Start sample, it will go to the recording sequence in a minute. One side. So as you can imagine, once you're stepping into, you can see that the program is sort of a little on the slower side. Let's let's probably take this slow step out. Step into, right? Now it's gonna work pretty fast. So with the slow step, you are able to sort of comprehend what all activities are being executed. I usually use slow step a lot because I don't know, uh, I'm a slow learner myself, I feel that. And uh, being able to, you know, see which activity is corresponding to which operation, it helps me a lot in uh, either making any sort of changes or, or working on them all together or, or just leaving them as is as well. That does happen pretty often too. So um, step over is like it's gonna, finish off the whole activity uh, in a single go. So it did, and then there it is. You know, it didn't go back and forth. It, it's, it's gonna work like much, much, much faster, right? I've discussed this theoretical detail in step, uh, in, uh, in the blog article, so please do check that out. But on and all, these are like very simple options. Stepping over, like, if you sort of comprehend it or analyze it uh, in your head, you'll see stepping over something is like, you know, just finishing that off and, and just passing that hurdle in a single go. Stepping into is like you're, you're putting your leg into something, right? And you're stepping through it one by one instead of hooping over it or something like that, right? So um, that is uh, pretty much it. Those are the debugging options that are provided within the UiPath Studio. I also want to tell you about um, um, the most common error that you may encounter um, in, in any of the RPA bots, which is um, the selector error, right? The program would not be able to identify the correct selector. So for that, I'm going to open another notepad document. Right? I'm going to save it with the name. Any desktop, desktop, ABC, right? I'm gonna close this. Yeah, don't save. And uh, this is also a document, right? And uh, pretty much the same except for the name. And if we run the program, we see if it works out or not. Let's see. The program is actually sort of running, but uh, it's not able to identify the uh, target application and you can imagine why because we've discussed selectors in in 
in a pretty decent fashion. So it's gonna wait for 30 seconds. I should have probably taken out the timeout parameter to just 10 seconds or something. But um, just it, okay. So this this uh, particular exception, which says the attach window or whatever whatever the activity is, that it cannot find the UI element is very very common. I've discussed this in the blog post as well that uh, there could be several reasons for it and you need to uh, incorporate either all of them or whichever holds true for your particular use case that you're working on right you have to handle those errors in 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 your workflow itself you have to have some rules and usually you come up with those rules by discussing them with the client or the person who will be using the system in case it is you you got to decide Right. Uh, I have given a pretty good example where um, when trying to launch an application, if you're unsuccessful in your first attempt, you wouldn't just give up the whole process right away or the whole operation that needs to be performed. You would rather give it another shot two or three times. You will retry to launch the application. And even then, if it fails, then you do the remediation steps, which could be either reaching out to your IT administrator to say that, you know, could you please help me out? I'm not able to access the application or um or just simply you know uh log it somewhere in your in your some log file some excel tracker spreadsheet something that says that you know i tried to access it at this particular time but i was unable to access it and here is the screenshot of the error that's a great error mechanism handling mechanism so you need to incorporate those things in your workflow as well and we're going to talk about how to uh, use these activities corresponding to this sort of methodology that I'm talking about, and also about uh, uh, the try catch and the finally blocks that are available in uh, in UiPath. So uh, please do stay tuned. And um, for a thorough RPA learning, please do check out the uh, ebook, uh, the book series that I have, and the video tutorials that I have on Udemy and Skillshare with the same name called CRISPR Learning for Robotics Process Automation, UiPath. I also have the stuff for Blue Prism as well, so please do check that out. And uh, I would really appreciate if you could comment, share, and uh, like, and subscribe to the YouTube channel, to my blog posts, and uh, let me know your feedback, your thoughts on the same. All right. Thank you very much, guys, and happy automating. Goodbye.